I've had the idea for a toothpaste dispenser for over two years now, but I struggled with whether or not it was really necessary. I looked online and found some models, but they were mostly cheap plastic versions that according to the reviews didn't work very well. So I kept pushing the idea aside, but it kept coming back to me and I couldn't get it out of my head. That's when I decided it was finally time to bring the idea to life. My idea is to use a lead screw from an old 3D printer, which will be driven by a NEMA 17 motor, also salvaged from the same printer. The lead screw will move a piston downwards, squeezing the toothpaste out through a nozzle. Essentially, I'm building a linear actuator with a piston attached. I now installed the acrylic tube and the second uh, suction cup to the base plate and I let this hang for more than 12 hours and it is still holding strong so this gives me enough confidence to move on with the project. The stepper motor bracket I cut out of a 2mm anodized aluminum plate which is actually the same plate I use for the view window on my stepper motor clock. While cutting out the contour, the plate shifted slightly, so I had to cut a second one. But the first plate didn't go to waste, because I used that plate to test out the bending process. And so even though I think this project was fun, and there's no doubt that this is not the most useful project, but it was quite fun and I was able to try out some new techniques, and there are definitely worse things to spend your time on, I think. Um, quick break from editing, I feel like I didn't do a good job explaining the whole thing. So in this pocket um, there will sit a rectangular nut and because the screw is fixed axially and the nut can't rotate it will move up and down. Just like a normal screw and nut. And attached to the nut is a rod that will eventually um, push the toothpaste out through the nozzle. I hope this quick explanation makes things a bit clearer. For the piston my plan was to cast it out of silicon because silicon is food safe. Normally piston and syringes are made from stiff rubber or plastic but I chose silicon because it was quite cheap. And I had never worked with it before so I wanted to give it a try. I was a bit worried that the silicon might be too soft and create too much friction so I added some carbon dust to firm it up a bit. If I'm not mistaken this is similar to what they do with rubber tires to increase strength which is also the reason why tires are always black. My initial plan was to mix the silicon in a cup and then use the syringe to inject it into the mold. But because the carbon dust wasn't fine enough, that method didn't work very well. So I ended up just pouring it directly into the mold. And in a panic I also drilled a few ventilation holes, hoping they'd help with the casting process.
Actually, that doesn't look that bad. Well, we have here a big air bubble, but other than that, I think it looks quite good. Despite this messy approach, I ended up with a usable cast, but as I feared, the friction was too high. So I decided to print the piston out of TPU. Um, I put a little bit of hot glue onto the PEI sheet because I read that TPU um, really wants to stick to the um, PEI sheet and you will have a hard time removing the, t um, the print so the, um, the glue stick acts as a release agent. I had to modify the design slightly because TPU is a lot stiffer than the silicon and I couldn't stretch it over the piston. I ended up printing about 5 different versions adjusting the diameter, infill density and wall thickness until I finally got the fit I was satisfied with. The nozzle I wanted to print with my SLA printer because compared to FDM printed parts the layers are a lot smaller which makes it easier to seal the surface and prevent bacterial growth. Because straight out of the printer SLA parts aren't food safe and you have to add a protective layer between the SLA printed part and the food, in this case the toothpaste. In these few shots it looks like everything worked out in the first try. In reality I had quite a lot of problems with my SLA printer and the parts kept stuck into the tank and not the build plate. I had to um, change the fab sheet and also sand the build plate in order to get a usable um, print out of the printer. In the meantime I got myself a new 3D printer, the Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro, which cost around 200 euros. It ended up being really helpful for this project, however a few days after I got it I ran into some issues where the printer wouldn't start. Luckily the folks over at Elegoo were super helpful and sent me a new control board and I was able to get the printer up and running again. I've got to say it's incredible how much faster this printer is compared to my Ender 3. I still be using the Ender, but it's really nice to have two printers on hand now. Now I just have to reassemble the extruder and we can move on to the electronics. I recently switched my editing software to DaVinci Resolve and I noticed that the iPhone shots um, looked quite weird, they were really washed out. I tried a bunch of color grading tricks I found online but I never was quite happy with the results. I then realized that I could change the video settings directly on my iPhone and that actually fixed it. So if some shots in the video look a little off, that's why. While testing I noticed the backplate was flexing quite a bit, so I grabbed a figure sheet of acrylic and so... That means it's laser time. The new plate is quite a lot thicker than the old plate, um, 6mm compared to 3mm, but I already showed you like I think two times how I um, assembled the extruder, so I will save you from that this time and we will move to the next step. Um, so then came the electronics, um, we are already like 10 minutes into the video, so I will make this quick. I started by prototyping the whole thing on a breadboard and then I decided I needed end switches, so the extruder will not destroy itself. Then I added those, I printed new parts, um, then I cut the perf board, soldered everything up and then I thought I will need a switch for refilling so that I can move the plunger up and I will not um, have to manually turn the gear on the top end. And then I managed to fry my um, fancy ESP board, uh, motor driver and adapter while setting up OTA, so over the air update. 
Um, I think it was a faulty bug converter that uh, managed to fry all of those things. After that, it was a lot of testing and I got <laughs> toothpaste all over my workbench. And, and after a lot more testing, I finally thought I was done. I even built a mini camera slider to get um, some fancy shots from the final extruder. I then hang the extruder up in the bathroom and used it for a couple of weeks. But after the first week, um, this part um, broke. I think I didn't um, print it strong enough. It was quite uh, thin um, at this part. So I redesigned this part and printed a new part. But I also machined the back part out of aluminum, out of this 10 millimeter aluminum. And this time I integrated an interlocking feature. So you can see here, there's a little um, acrylic lip that interlocks into this aluminum part. So, so some of the force will transfer um, through this part and, and into the clamp and it doesn't rely solely on clamping force. Um, one thing I also want to try out is um, replacing the TPU plunger with the silicon plunger I made. Um, because after all the TPU isn't food safe because in all those um, little layer lines um, bacteria can grow. I know um, toothpaste isn't food but after all it comes um, in contact with your mouth so it should be food safe. I didn't want to, to, to use the silicon plunger because I thought it would have um, it will stall the motor because it's quite a lot of friction but after using the extruder for a couple of weeks um, the extruder never had any kind of problems pushing the toothpaste out through the nozzle so I think the, um, the silicon plunger will not be a problem. So now I can finally say that the dispenser is finished. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing, it would mean a lot.